You got angels on assignment. It's a weapon. It's a tool. He said, don't forget. He said, see, you, see, he said, you can forget the angels are on assignment. And somebody might be coming to your house today, and it's an angel that's here to do. They don't come for nothing. on going on to perfection and as we started with Hebrews 6 and talked about the foundational principles and how the enemy tries to discourage us from our foundation we utilize the tools and resources that God has given us we get into angels we get into dreams we get into how the ministry of the spirit act as aids and tools to help us to perfect that which God has given us let's go in and take a listen right but there are a lot of people listening to us, amen, all over the airwaves. There are a lot of people listening to us. It says what 13.2 says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. <laughs> God is trying to tell you something. In other words, here's what the apostle, this is the apostle Paul, even though it does not, he didn't, he didn't sign the letter, right? I'm convinced it was the Apostle Paul because he was writing to the Hebrews and so he had to write from the perspective of a Hebrew, right? And there were reasons why it was not advantageous to sign this letter. So he says, don't forget to entertain strangers. In other words, don't forget this weapon. Entertaining strangers is a weapon for the church. Entertaining strangers is a resource for the church. Now, I'm not saying, right, just go out in the street, right, and just entertain it. Everybody out in the street, come in my house. No, I'm not saying that. No, no. What I'm saying is, is you have to be discerning. If your foundation is sure, right, you, you have some level, some degree of discernment, right, to be able to recognize. I'm going to show it to you. To be able to recognize, he says, do not forget to entertain strangers, right? He says, don't forget this weapon. Don't forget this resource. Now, let's look at it. I want to look at it in the NIV. Give me the NIV. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. I'm trying to really get you and push you to a place where you start giving as much space in your brain and in your heart to recognize that angels are in your atmosphere as you do to the fact that demons in your atmosphere. Amen. You know, see, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, y'all got your houses all oiled up. You got oil all over your dope poles and, you know, you got all kinds of this, that, and the other, you know what I mean? I'm keeping these demons out of here. And I told them don't come in my house. And are you with me? Are you with me? As soon as something moves in your house, what was that? What was it? There are, there are twice as many angels as demons. A third fell with the enemy. And then there were some in Genesis who left their first estate. Right? They took women for wives. They left their first estate. They took women, and that's why they said, we got these men of renown, these, these you know, I think, I think in a roundabout way, it is connected to the mythical things of uh, Roman and Greek mythology. Right? And they were the giants. Right? And it says they left their first estate, and it says that they are already judged. They're held in chains. Right? Until the day of judgment. They're held in chains. So you got, I don't know how many it is, but you got angels held in chains, and then you have who are being judged because they left their first estate, right? And then you have those that 
are uh, imps and workers for the enemy. But there are twice as many angels. When Daniel was praying, he got two angels for one devil. <laughs> oh, church, I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen tonight. He got two angels for one devil. He got Michael and Gravy to deal with Persia. And he said, when we get down with Persia, we're going to deal with Grecia. Didn't he? So I'm saying, if your spiritual eyes were open. Remember, Elisha prayed for Gehazi. And he said, Lord, open his eyes. Because Gehazi was terrified. He said, he said we're going to get killed. Syria, the Syrian army is going to kill us. He saw all those Syrian army people, right? And Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see that there be more with us than there are against us. Oh, I'm, I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen tonight. He said, there are more with us than against us. And the Bible says, then God opened his eyes and he was able to see in the spirit and he saw all these angels in chariots of fire. So if your eyes were open to the degree that you could see in this space, you would see twice as many angels as demons. But we think about a devil twice what we think about an angel once. I said something then. You got angels on assignment. It's a weapon. It's a tool. He said, don't forget. He said, see you, see, he said, you can forget the angels are on assignment. And somebody might be coming to your house today and it's an angel that's here to do. They don't come for nothing. They came, you were to entertain them because they needed to drop something off to you. Whenever we saw angels uh, appear and saw angels manifest, they would, you know, they said, Mary, you're about to have a son. They said, Gideon, come on, let's prove this thing out. Let's deal with your fear and your faithlessness because God's getting ready to use you to defeat an army with some pictures and some lamps. Are y'all with me still? He says, don't forget. You got to deal with your forgetfulness. You got to deal with the fact that demons are making you forget that you got angels that are more powerful and more numerous that are sent to help you win. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. And, the, and then let's get the Amplified. And then we're going to close. I got three more minutes on my 10 you gave me. Do not neglect to extend hospitality to strangers, especially among the family of believers. So see, that helps you there, you see. Because a lot of times, you know, you don't know strangers. You know, you could have strangers in just, you know, you could be in some strange spaces and it's like, you know, I mean, you got to have your guard up, right? But he says, you can have strangers when you're in the family of believers. In other words, okay, let me say it this way. God is saying he'll send strangers into your, into your, your meetings. Yeah. He'll send strangers into your, in the family of believers. He'll send people you don't know, right? And, and they can be angels on assignment. Especially among the family of believers, being friendly and cordial and gracious. Some of y'all got to deal with your mean issues. Some of y'all got to pray every day, get up and say, okay, Lord, forgive me. You know what I mean? I was a little nasty yesterday around 5 o'clock when that guy, you know, cut me off. I was a little nasty. Ask for forgiveness for that. That's a, that, come on, that's a, that's a fox against your vine. Amen. Of, 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 of breakthrough and sensitivity to the things of the spirit. Some of y'all tell little white lies. You know what I mean? Little white ones, little black ones, whatever you want to call them. Little Asian lies. I don't care what you want to call them. Some of y'all tell little lies, right? You know you just trying to impress me. Why would you want to impress me and unimpress God? And I'm not knocking you for it. I'm just saying, when you get up the next day and pray, say, God, you know, I said, you know, I said that yesterday. That wasn't all true. I, that wasn't. Yeah, I, you know, it was just my pride. You know, I'm, I'm just a people pleaser and I just wanted to, you know what I mean? Sometimes folks can ask you something and you answer before you think about it. And then you realize, I lied. I asked that so quick. I said, yeah, I should have said no. Right? Lord, I, I'm sorry. If you give me another chance today, 
Let somebody hit me with a quick question today. I'm going to get it right. I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, you know, that person that I had said I had forgiven, and I talked to them yesterday, and I knew I was a little short. Well, knew I was a little short. Even if they didn't know I was a little short, I knew I was a little short. I was feeling some kind of way. I was, you know. No, I love If you give me another chance, have them to call today. I'm going to be as cordial and gracious, right? We all have done it, right? These are the foxes that we want out of our vine. So see, that, that right there is going to get you at least an hour of prayer. Just, you know what I mean? Lord, let's just fix yesterday. Let's just, you know what I mean? Let me just, you know, let's talk about the lie told. Let's talk about, you know what I mean? That, that, you know what I mean? That kind of little attitude that I had around 2.30. Let's just, you know what I mean? Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. That time I, I was disobedient. And one of the times you told me to do something, and I was like, I ain't doing it. <laughs> Fix all that. <laughs> yeah, we, fix all that. Yeah. Just take the beginning of the day and fix all that. That's right. That's right. And what it's going to do is it's going to unclog your spiritual ears so you can hear. Amen. Many times you're not hearing because you, you know what I mean? You got yesterday you just didn't fix. You know, Jesus said when you pray, say, forgive us even as we forgive those who trespass against us. You, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You got to fix it. You got to fix it. So, you know, just take the time with the Lord, right? He says, friendly, cordial, gracious, sharing the comforts of your home and doing your part generously. For by this, by doing these things, you get to entertain strangers, right, who are angels. You get to entertain angels, the Bible says, without knowing it. I'm going to prove it to you. Chapter Genesis chapter 10, 18, verses 1 and 10. 1 through 10. Quickly. And we're done. And the Lord appeared... Right? Unto him in the plains of Mamre. Who is him? Abraham. Come on now. She read her Bible. Abraham. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. He looked up and he saw three what? Men. They look like men. They talk like men. They walk like men. But they were what? And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, now watch this now, because we'll say, you know, you ain't, y'all ain't seeing no angels. Ain't no, there's no angels. You know, son of, son of, if an angel showed up, everybody would be on the floor. Everybody would be doing this, right? Well, no, there are angels that, you know, in other words, they can, they can appear in the material world, right? And they can appear, the Bible says even Satan appears as an angel of light. So they can change and adjust their appearance. If now I have found favor in your sight, he said, my Lord, so Abraham, everything about these angels in the natural was men. But Abraham discerned, these are not men. They didn't announce themselves as angels. There wasn't this big flood of light. They didn't say, hell, hell, hell. We have come in the name. They didn't have... You know, those three-foot-long trumpets. Do, 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 do. He said, my Lord, if I have now found favor in, in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Come on. Quickly. Let a little water, I pray you be fetched. And wash your feet. See, what is this? This is humility. Moses parted red, the Red Sea because of his humility. In other words, God used Moses. To part the Red Sea because of his humility. Pride is our biggest enemy. A little water, I pray you be fetched to wash your feet, rest yourselves under the tree, come on. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you, your hearts after that you shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. He was, look at this. I wouldn't be surprised if Abraham didn't have a dream that let him know, you know, that this was coming. I wish I could finish this, I can't. After that, you shall pass on, because I'm going to talk about another weapon, but I can't. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Come on. And Abraham hearkened unto the tent, hastened into the tent 
on the seraph and said, make ready quickly. And I got to get to at least what the angels came for. Make ready quickly. Three measures of five men. These were three men that showed up, right? Remember, if you don't forget to entertain strangers, you got something coming. Sarah said, he said, make ready quickly. Three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the, upon the house. See, what are they doing? He's sowing. He's sowing. Y'all, I'm telling you, there are people in this room, and there are people who are listening to me. The only reason why your finances are messed up and stuff is broken down because you still don't understand so. You still are too selfish and too afraid of releasing something to God as opposed to controlling it yourself to prosper. Abraham ran unto the herd. Three strangers. Three strangers. Go get some water. I'm going to get a, one of the best calves. Fetch a calf tender and good. Gave it unto the young men, and he hasted to dress it. He employed the resources that were available to him. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed. Y'all, this is all throughout the Bible. It's all over the Bible. Only religion hides it. Isaac redug the wells of his father, right? Those wells were there when those people who lived in that land who were religious and worldly and earthly and had no clue, right? But when he redug the wells, then they wanted to contend with him. He took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did what? Eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? See, when he sowed, he said, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, she in the tent. And he said, now I like that, because you see his faith working and you see her faith resting. Right? Faith without works is dead. We won't get to this, but he, you know, she's in the tent. He said, she in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the time of life. Now here it is. Remember the revelation. Remember I told y'all when I was teaching about a month or two ago about Abraham, how Abraham, when he tied, right, the blessing of the tithe was revelation. When he tied, right, it was revelation. God revealed to him what he was going to do for him. When he gave the tithe, God gave him a word that through process became a promise. I'm teaching y'all so good tonight. He gave him a word that through process became a promise. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the time of life. He said, in nine months, I'm coming back. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. This is why they came. But if he had forgotten to entertain them, he would have missed his word. He would have missed his word if he had forgotten to entertain them. Because they didn't look like angels. They looked like strangers. I don't fool with strangers. Sarah, thy wife, will have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. <laughs> she heard it. She in the tent now. Her faith is resting. Faith without works is what? And she heard it. Now his response was, serve the word of God. That's what they brought. That's what they had. Serve the word of God. Her response was, <laughs> They clueless. Man, I'm 90 years old. She was actually 99. She was, she was, uh, no, she was 10 years younger than Abraham. So, yes, she was 90. Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind them. We'll read a few more. Come on. I said 10. We'll read, we'll read a few more. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with them. And I'm, I'm, I'm through. I'm not going any further. It ceased to be with them with Sarah after the man of women. So, the Bible said clearly, her womb was dead. It's not one of those things where they lived longer back then. Stuff was still working at that age. No, 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 no. Verse 11 said her womb was dead. Nothing was working. All right, verse 12, come on. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, <laughs> Man, I'm so old. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? I'm old, Abraham old. You know, you can be so down on yourself that you'll be down on somebody else. Because 
you know, it wasn't but 13 years ago, Abraham had had a boy. His stuff was still popping. <laughs> Are you hearing? Maybe. You know. When he was his at her age, he had Ishmael. Right? right? The Lord said to Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh? So watch this. The angel said, why is she laughing? See, she's not properly entertaining strangers. So the word didn't come to her. It came to Abraham. Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I have assured to bear a child which am old? And this, is anything too hard for the Lord? Wow. Wow. Is anything too, is some of y'all sitting in the chair right now, you, you, you got something standing before you, and you struggling with, this, this might be too hard for God. Because I've gotten weary of my well-doing. I've been laying the foundation to go on to perfection, but I have gotten weary in my well-doing, and I struggle. I need a prophetic word almost every day to keep me propped it up. And I made that word up, propped it. To keep me propped it up. Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's all God wants for us. It's for us to wake up every day. You know what I mean? It's that, this ain't nothing for God. And because it's nothing for God, it can't steal my joy. It can't have my peace. I'm not going to spend a minute depressed. I'm not going to spend a minute burdened. I'm, gonna, I'm not wasting a day. God has numbered my days. I'm going to enjoy every one of them. Ooh, I'm teaching better than y'all say it. Amen tonight. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return. In other words, when it's time, I'm coming. This is what when he entertained the angel, he got this word that had the power to make nine months be nine months, right? To be productive. I will return unto thee according to the time of life. So he said nine months. So that tells you that that night, Abraham and Sarah, they turned the lights off in the tent. I don't mean to sound... They tell me sometimes, you, you didn't have to say that. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. You need to say that to yourself. You're getting ready to have your baby. You're getting ready to have your baby. You're getting ready to have the thing that the word of God has promised to reduce in your life. You ought to stand up and shout unto God on that. You're getting ready to have your baby. You're getting ready to have the thing that God has promised you. You're getting ready to produce it. 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 You're getting ready to have the thing that God has promised you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't wake up in prayer the next day and deny what you did yesterday. Sarah denied saying, I didn't laugh. Get up the next morning, right? Say, God, you know what? I didn't do that quite right yesterday. Can you forgive me for that? Let's just clean this out. Before I start asking for stuff, right? Let's fix me. Right? This is humility. Humility is the way into the door. And you, you humble yourself by realizing that you got your own stuff that you need to clear out. Right? So God can move. Father, I thank you tonight. Our time is out. I thank you tonight for these children, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Old and young. Amen. Voices. Men and women of faith, vessels of honor, ready for a breakthrough, ready to see a miracle. I pray that they'll see the angel, amen, that's been sent to speak a word of change tonight. I pray that they'll see the angel that has been sent to bring to pass change in their life. Bless them. Let their faith be ready for it. Let their hearts be ready for it. Let their prayer, deal with them in their prayer where first things are always first. Oh God, so the last things can come in this time. 
I thank you and I give you praise and I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. In this message, going on to perfection, we looked at Hebrews 6, where it talks about the foundational principles of the Word of God and the life of the believer. And then we began to deal with how there are tools in the kingdom. Everything from your dreams. God uses your dreams to speak to you, to, to educate you, to bring you revelation, to help you to understand the season you're in. He deals with angels. Angels visit the believer to help the believer, to speak to the believer, and even to do warfare for the believer. So in going on to perfection, we wanted you to know how God uses elements to help you, aid you, even in your intimacy with the Lord. So dream. Allow the Lord to speak to you in your dreams and allow the Lord to show you the things in your life that he has used to aid you in this walk with Christ. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. I pray Cedric Taylor Ministries and today's message was a blessing to you and strengthened your walk with Christ. Remember, it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Cedric Taylor Ministries is viewer supported. And if you would like to help us continue to carry this vision to the world, we pray that God places in your heart the desire to do so. To send your gift, just scan the QR code on your screen or visit our website. If you'd like to become a partner with us with a monthly gift of any amount, you may do so by writing to us at Cedric Taylor Ministries at the address on your screen. We greatly appreciate your love, prayers, and support of this ministry. If you are ever in the Memphis area, please come visit us at Koinonia Christian Center. Until next time, stay in the Word, stay in faith, and stay full.